In this nugget, you and I are going to take a closer look at the vulnerability known as shell shock. Let's begin. So let's start off with the description. What the heck is shell shock? Well, referring to vulnerabilities in computer systems, it's a vulnerability in a bash shell. It was discovered in 2014 and it affected a lot of people. For example, if you had a Linux server that was running a web service like Apache and was utilizing CGI, and in this case, CGI is referring to the common gateway interface, it could allow the attacker to send a malformed environment variable and as part of that have the server execute code or run commands that otherwise shouldn't be permitted. Now there are several CVE numbers associated with the Shellshock bug and I suppose we should break down that acronym as well. CVE stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. And what CVEs do for you and I is that as a part of the internet community we can be aware first of all that there are vulnerabilities and bugs and as a group, we can kind of pay attention to those, including making sure that our systems are no longer vulnerable to those bugs. And the CVEs are CVE-2014, which is the year that they were discovered, dash, and then there's a large set of them. In this example, there's six specific CVEs regarding the shell shock bug. Now, regarding scanning and discovery, what are some reasons that owners of systems or managers of systems would want to know if they're vulnerable or not? Well, the answer is, if we're vulnerable, we want to patch those suckers so that we're not going to be attacked. And if there's an attacker out there, they want to scan and discover systems so they can compromise the system based on that vulnerability. So there are lots of third-party scanners out there that can be used to scan for that specific vulnerability, for shell shock. There's also some scripts that can be used with Nmap that can make an attempt to identify whether or not that vulnerability exists on a system that's being scanned with Nmap. So here on my VM workstation host, I've got the Metasploitable computer, or the Metasploitable VM rather, and that's what we're looking at right here at this console. So a couple of things we might want to do is do an IF config just to verify what the IP address is on this device. I checked earlier, I saw it was 122, and it still is, that's a good sign. And we can also take a look at the version of the bash shell it has by typing in bash space dash dash version and pressing enter. And, the, and this has a really old version of the bash shell. So there's a very good chance that it's vulnerable because of shell shock. So next let's go over to our Kelly Linux box. And here in the browser, let's go ahead and go to that IP address of dot .122 of our Metasploitable 2 machine. And I just wanted to verify that HTTP was up and running on this system. So we'll go ahead and minimize that browser. And let's bring up a command shell on our Kelly Linux box. So we've had some nuggets as part of this course on Nmap. If we want to include a script, as part of the nmap scan, we can do a dash dash script and then the name of the script. Now, on this current version of Kali Linux, it has the HTTP dash shellshock script already included. If you're running an older version of nmap, you could either update that or just download the shellshock script and then use it that way. So if we launch this scan against that server and press enter, it'll start that scan and in a period of time it'll come back and give us the results. So due to the magic of editing, I have those results ready for us, and they are right here. So here it's showing us some open ports and the versions behind those ports. Here's TCP port 80. And if Nmap could detect the Shellshock vulnerability, it would show up right here as well under the port 80 findings. It would say something like Shellshock vulnerable, etc. Now I don't see that here, and that's a good reminder that if we're going to be testing for various vulnerabilities and certain features, we might want to have a couple of different ways of testing or verifying that because not every hacking tool is going to give us perfect results every single time. Now, if we were to go back to that server, the Metasploitable 2, let's go back to the command shell here. One way of testing it would be to do this. And there are several other options that we could do as part of that string. So when we press enter, notice it did the just a test, which is acceptable because we said bash dash C echo just a test and it echoed that to the screen. But check this out. It also executed this command as well, echo vulnerable right here to the screen. So if the attacker did something like this, I'm just hitting the up arrow key now. I'm going to go back and modify the echo vulnerable. I'm going to change that to cat space slash root slash P-A-S-S-W-D. And then as part of that variable, we're now causing the system to execute code. In fact, display the contents of whatever's in that root slash password file when it shouldn't be. So let's press enter. And that's because I do not have a P-A-S-S-W-D file inside my root folder, but I tell you where I do have one. I do have one in ETC. So if we change root to ETC and press enter, there's the output from the Etsy password file. So for the attacker, the shell shock is a gift. For the company that owns or manages that system, it is something that should have been immediately patched right after the vulnerability was announced. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.